हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू लैब 14 व्हाट इज एसिंक्रोनस कंट्रोलर होप यू हैव एंजॉयड ऑल अवर प्रीवियस 13 लैब्स एंड लर्न लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स अबाउट एमवीसी डेवलपमेंट नाउ इन दिस लैब विल स्पीक अबाउट एसिंक्रोनस कंट्रोलर्स और सैंपल एप्लीकेशन कंटेन अ यूआई और इन टर्म्स ऑफ एम अ व्यू विच इज डिवाइडेड इन फोर सेक्शन सेक्शन वन सेक्शन टू section 3 and section 4 each of this section is displaying some kind of data now let's look at the code and understand from where this data is coming first let's look at the view as you can see our view is a strongly typed view of type dashboard view model and these four sections are getting data from its properties now let's get into the controller and see what kind of code is written over there here we have a simple action method called dashboard where we are creating a object of dashboard view model and then we create the object of dashboard business layer now let's look at the dashboard business layer for that right click say go to definition this business layer contain simple four methods get data 1 get data 2 get data 3 and get data 4 each of these method will return some kind of data now let's come back to controller let's right click this dashboard view model and say go to definition as you can see this class dashboard view model contain simple four properties of type string now let's get back to our controller and see what else is written here as you can see after we create object of dashboard business layer we invoke each of the functions inside it one by one and whatever it will return we are storing it inside a uh, dashboard view model property and finally we pass this dashboard view model object as a parameter to view function and ultimately this data will get available to the uh, available to our strongly type view now this example is quite uh, simple but in real scenario this each one of this method may contain some heavy logic heavy logic means logic which will take more time to execute your logic may be a database logic or may be a web invocation logic or may be anything something else but at the end of the day your function execution is going to take time now in order to simulate this scenario what i'll do is i'll come to my get data one method and i'll add a simple line here task okay in order to use task we need to implement we need to put a namespace that is using system dot threading dot task if you don't know what what is mean by this task then please go through task parallel library video from our questpondvd.com okay now let's come back to our method i'll say task dot delay 1000 dot delay dot wait it will make our application halt for 1 second now let me copy the code and let me put it in all the functions okay now when someone make request to this dashboard action he will get output after 4 seconds now just to make sure that it's actually taking 4 seconds to execute what i'll do is i'll create a stop watch here okay and for that we need to uh, put this using stopwatch w equal to new stopwatch and i'll say w dot start and then i'll say here w dot stop and i'll simply add a data inside this view back dot time is equal to w dot elapsed seconds elapsed milliseconds i means and semicolon now i'll come i'll go to my view okay we are we'll copy this and i'll say total sorry total execution time is i'll say at the rate view back dot time now let's execute this application and let's test for that let's press f5 and it's there it will take 4 second to execute see 
execution time is 4 seconds. Let me say reload again. And you will see that we are getting output after 4 seconds. Now, the point here is, if you look at the code in our controller, see each one of this method is actually independent method. So what I believe is each one of this method should get executed in multi-threaded manner. And once the execution of all of these methods completes, we should get the output. So let's, imp uh, let's implement multi-threading here and let's see what kind of benefits we get. Now, for that what I'll do is I'll simply remove this code and I'll put task dot factory dot start new. It means create a new task and execute it. And what we will get in response, we will get string. See basically when we invoke this get data one, we are going to get string in the output. That's why we should put string as a generic parameter here. And then simply put the name of the method that is DDL dbl dot get data one this start new method will simply return a task object task string i'll say t1 then i'll do the same thing for other three methods i'll say t2 t3 and t4 get data 2 get data 3 and get data 4 Next point is, now before this method, this, this line get executes, we have to make sure that these four tasks have completed their execution so that we can get the return values of those four tasks and populate this data property, data object of dashboard view, uh, data object of this dashboard view model class. So for that, what I'll do is I'll say task dot when all t1 comma t2 comma t3 comma t4 that means execute next line only after these four tasks complete their execution then i'll say data dot data one is equal to t1 dot result and then i'll say then i'll do the same thing for other four properties data two data three and data four t2 t3 and t4 so now let's execute and let's see what kind of output we will get. Press F5, click reload. As you can see, we are getting this output in two seconds. Let me say reload. See, it's not actually taking four seconds. Rather, we are getting all the data in one second. Let me do it again, one second. Let me do it again one second and the reason for that is all four of these methods are executing in multi-threading manner multi-threaded manner okay and and this line will execute when all four of them completes execution okay so ultimately there is one main thread which is executing which will reach this line okay which will come here okay and from here a new thread will start and here one more thread will start here one more thread will start and here one more thread will start that means when main thread reaches this line at that time already four threads are executing in the background executing each one of these methods okay and main thread says i will wait here unless and until all four threads completes all four other threads completes their execution okay and after that when all four of them completes main thread populates the values of the those uh, sub threads into the into these properties and then we are passing that data as a model to the view. That's it. It's that simple. We have achieved what we want, but we have not spoken anything about asynchronous controllers yet. So in order to understand asynchronous controllers, let's do couple of more R&D. So what I'll do is here, I'll simply create a string variable, st sorry, int variable. I'll say int thread 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 one id equal to thread for using thread we need to implement this namespace thread dot current thread dot manage thread id okay it will give me the id of the thread the current thread and here i'll say thread two id and here i'll say 
create two more view back. I'll say view back dot initial thread ID ITI equal to thread one ID and view back dot final thread ID FTI equal to see these are the just names okay which I gave. I'll say thread two ID. Now let's execute. Okay, before that, let's go to our view and let's do some changes. I'll say enter. I'll say initial thread ID is. I'll say at the rate view back dot initial thread ID. Break tag. Enter final thread ID is at the rate view back dot view back dot final thread id now let's execute and see what kind of output we get let's press f5 okay and let's see what we will get as you can see initial thread id is 6 and final thread is id is also 6 let's recheck again again same initial thread id is 9 and final thread id is 9 now let's go back to our code and let's understand it again. As I said, as soon as I make a request, as soon as a user make a request to any action method, a thread get allocated from for him from a in a uh, from the thread pool. Okay, there is a thread pool in IIS. One of the thread will be retrieved from that thread pool and will will be assigned to that request. That thread will start executing this code line by line. And when it reaches here, it will start creating new threads, new child threads. And when that main thread reaches here, it says I will wait unless and until my all child threads complete their execution. And once all the child threads complete their execution, it will it, uh, it will execute this line and it will go further. That means thread which was here and thread which is here the main thread i'm talking about i'm talking about main thread not child thread the main thread which was here and the main thread which is here is same that's why the thread id of both of them are same okay but if it goes like this there is a problem there is a problem let's understand that problem is contain thread pool thread pool contain set of threads each time a new request comes and a thread from thread pool is assigned to serve that request. Now that thread get released when the execution completes or we can say when request is completely served. Now let's say because of some reason request is in a wait mode or, or we can say execution is in a wait mode. So for that duration the thread will be in a uh, wait mode as well. So if this keep on continue we will end up at a point where there will be no thread available to serve any new request. That means we will end up with thread starvation. Thread starvation means when new request comes, it, it will go to wait mode because there is no one that, or we can say there is no thread available who can serve that request. Now in the earlier example which we did, as soon as our main thread reaches this line, it will get into wait mode and it will come it will continue its execution only after its four child threads complete its execution now as a solution to thread starvation what we should do is as soon as main thread reaches this line we should release it so that it can be used for serving some other request and when all four child thread completes its execution a new thread from the available thread pool get allocated to serve the same request again and it will continue its execution from this line automatically if we can do this somehow it will solve the problem of thread starvation automatically and this is where asynchronous com controllers comes to picture Asyn asynchronous controller will let us solve the problem of thread starvation now to implement asynchronous controllers you have to follow simple four steps step number one change your base class from controller to async controller step number two in your action method, instead of returning action result, return task of async result. Step number three, mark your action method as async. Step number four, this task.whenAll, attach await keyword here. That's it. If now someone make a request to this action method, a new thread from a thread pool get allocated to serve his request. When thread reaches this line, it will create a new thread. 
and when by the time it reaches here there is already four thread created and now when that main thread reaches this line thread get released automatically and once all the four child threads get completed automatically a new thread from the thread pool get allocated to the same previous request again and it will continue its execution from here to confirm the same let's execute this application let me put a breakpoint here and let me put a breakpoint here let me say execute say slash test slash dashboard enter it's here if you check the thread id it's 7 the main thread id is 7 okay i'll say f10 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 four thread started now as soon as i f as soon as i say f10 main thread is released now when all four of these methods complete their execution a new thread from the thread pool get allocated here so now if you check the thread id it will not be 7 anymore it's something different that is 10 so automatically in when the the execution reach this line thread get released and as soon as this four get completed a new thread from the thread, thread pool get allocated here and that is what asynchronous controller does it will let us solve the problem of uh, thread starvation see initial thread id is was 7 and final thread id is 10 in our earlier example both were same let's test it again let's say press let's press f5 see 11 and 10 every time you will get different thread id that means the one thread which started the uh, started serving the request and one thread which completed serving the request is very different so that's it about asynchronous controller if you have any questions what you can do is you can drop a mail to questpond at the .com or you can directly drop a, ma uh, a mail to me also okay thank you very much bye bye